committee will come to order. Ladies and gentlemen, I must insist that we maintain quiet during these proceedings. All right, Mr. Hughes, will you stand and be sworn? Do you solemnly swear that in the matter now pending before this committee, you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So I hope you got it. I do. Pardon me for speaking loudly, but I understand you have some difficulty hearing. Oh, that's, that's quite all right. I mean, everybody knows I'm deaf. I'm not going to try to hide it. <laughs> Mr. Hughes, it is the intention of this committee... Mr. Hughes has a statement. All right. All right, you may, you may proceed with this uh, statement, Mr. Hughes. Mr. Hughes, do you have a statement? <clears throat> I'm gonna, I'm gonna attempt to be uh, honest here. I mean, my reputation's being destroyed, so I might as well lay the cards on the table. Senator Brewster, if you hadn't have gone too far overboard, if you hadn't have put the red-hot iron in my side, I might have been willing to take a shellacking in this publicity spree of yours. I might have been willing to sit back and take a certain amount of abuse, simply because, well, well, I am only a private citizen, whereas you are a senator with all sorts of powers. But I think this goddamn circus has gone on long enough. That's quite sufficient. You have called me a liar, sir, in the press. You have called me a liar and a thief and a war profiteer. Witness will restrain his Why comments. not tell the truth for once, Senator? Why not tell the truth that this investigation was really born on the day that TWA first decided to fly to Europe? On the day that TWA first invaded Juan Tripp's territory. Sit down, Mr. Hughes. On the day that TWA first challenged the generally accepted theory that only Juan Tripp's great Pan American Airways had the sacred right to fly the Atlantic. We're not here to make a speech. I ask for silence. I ask for quiet in this room, and we're going to have quiet. Receipts no, I mean in the amount of $170,000 acquired from Mr. John Meyer. Mr. Meyer works for you, does he not? He does. And what is his official title? Well, I, I don't exactly know, mm. Senator. A lot of people work for me. Can you explain why your press agent would pay out more than $170,000 to representatives of the United States Air Force? Well, I don't know. I suppose you'd have to ask him, Senator. Well, would you produce him? Produce him? Will you cause him to appear? Well, Senator, you had John Meyer on the stand for three days last week. Well, be that as it may, we would like him to reappear here. Would you ask him to, to return? Uh, no, I don't think I will. Will you try to have him return? Uh, no, I don't think I'll try. You don't think you'll try? Uh, no, I don't think so. $170,000 paid out to the Air Force in the form of hotel suites, PWA stock, female companionship. Now, is it possible that these could be considered bribes? I suppose you could call them that, yes. Would you repeat that? I said, I suppose you could consider them bribes, yes. Well, would you like to explain that, Mr. Hughes? Oh, I'm afraid you don't know how the aviation business works, Senator. You see, whining and dining Air Force dignitaries is common in our business. It's because we all want the big contracts. All the major aircraft companies do it now. I don't know whether it's a good system or not. I just know it is not illegal. You, Senator, you are the lawmaker. If you pass a law that states no one can entertain Air Force officers, well, hell. I'd be happy to abide by it. <laughs> Senator Bruce, your story is a pack of lies, and I can tear it apart if allowed to cross the chair. We're not going to have this yes. bickering back and forth. Somewhere forward. between two and five hundred, if you'll just let me now, get started. Now, if you believe Senator. that because of your great wealth and power, you can intimidate any member of this committee, I want to advise you that you're mistaken. Now, now submit your question now, to the chair. I'll put this very simply. On February 12th, at the Mayflower Hotel, did you or did you not tell me 
that if I were to sell TWA to Pan Am, that this entire investigation would be called off? No, I did not. And I have asked you repeatedly to submit your questions well, in writing. how long have you known Juan Tripp, Senator? I've known Mr. Tripp for some time now, and well, is that's it not, not the question Is it here. not true that Juan Tripp donated $20,000 to your last campaign? I mean, he spoke to me as if you worked for him. All right. I have a personal friendship with Mr. Tripp. Is it Tripp, not that true is... that you accept free tickets from Pan Am so you can circle the globe in support of your CAB bill? No, no, it is not true. Well, who wrote that bill, Senator? No, we're asking the Who actually and... wrote the CAB bill, the actual words in the bill? Did you write them? This is not how these hearings are going to be conducted, I, I, Mr. Hughes. I have Hughes. it right here. Maybe it'll refresh your memory. Bill S-987 to amend the Civil Aeronautics Act. Now, you introduced this bill to the Senate. A lot of words. You write all of them? Did you write any of them, Senator? Now look, Mr. Hughes. Now this entire I... bill was written by Pan Am executives and designed to give that airline a monopoly on international travel. And you've been flogging this bill all around the world on their behalf, have you not? I have duties that take me all over the world, Mr. Hughes. Well, what the hell does a senator from Maine need to visit Peru for? I was, I was seeking outlets for our trade, our trade goods. Ah, uh, buy a lot of lobsters down there, do they? <laughs> Senator Brewster, how many times have you visited Juan Tripp's office in New York in the last three months? Huh? Would you like me to tell you, Senator? All right, this has gone on long enough. Juan Tripp is a great American. His airline has advanced the cause of commercial aviation in this country for decades. Juan Tripp is a patriot. Juan Tripp is not a man who's interested in making money. Hmm. Well, I'm sure his stockholders would be happy to hear that. <laughs> I'm telling you, we're going to clear this room. This is James McNamara speaking to you from aboard the house.